Hello everyone. My name is Yasunori Goto from Fujitsu. Today, I'd like to talk about the forefront of the development for NVD on Linux kernel. Here is the agenda. At first, I'd like to talk about the summary of current status of development for NVDIM. It is the basis of NVDIM on Linux and issues of file system DAX. DAX means direct access mode. Next, Ransom will talk about a deep dive to solve the issues of file system DAX. It supports Reflink and Delip for FS DAX and fix NVDIM based reverse mapping. Then, I'll talk conclusion. Let me introduce myself. I have worked for Linux and related OSs since 2002. I worked for Memory Hot Plug and Stickling Support for Troubles of Linux Kernel. And currently, I'm leader of Fujitsu Linux Kernel development teams, and I have worked for NVIDIA recently. Okay, let's start the basis of NVDIM on Linux. NVDIM is a persistent memory device which can be inserted to DIM slot like DRAM. CPU can read or write NVDIM directly, but it can keep data persistency even if system is powered down or rebooted. Latency, capacity, and cost have characteristics between DRAM and NVMe. So use case is, for example, in-memory database, hierarchical storage, distributed storage, keyboard store, and etc. And famous product is Intel Data Center Persistent Memory Module. Impact of NVDIM is very huge. Traditional I.O. layer becomes redundant for NVDIM. For example, page cast is redundant. It was created for slow I.O. storage but NVDIM is fast enough without page cache. And sync system core is redundant. If a user process calls CPU flash instruction, then it's enough to make persistency. And system core itself is redundant. Application can read or write to NVDIM directly. Even system core may be a waste of time due to switching between kernel mode and user mode. So, new interface is expected for NVIDIA. However, NVIDIA is difficult for traditional software. Many software assume that memory is volatile yet. So, what is be necessary for a software to use NVIDIA? The first is it needs to prepare for sudden power down. In older CPU, its cache is still volatile. If system power down suddenly, then some data may be lost here, yeah, may not be stored. Next is it needs data structure compatibility on NVDM. It should not change data structure in NVDM. If the structures are changed, software update will be cause of disaster. Third is it needs to detect and correct clasping data. If data is broken, software needs to detect it and correct it. And finally, it needs data area management. Software needs to assign not only free area, but also used area for reuse its data. In addition, kernel must assign the area to suitable process with authority check. As a result, there is a confliction of requirements. File system gives many solutions for the previous consideration. Uh, format compatibility of the file system and data correction, journaling or copy on write, range of management, authority check, and etc. So it's used for current software. However, file system is too slow. Uh, traditional I/O stack is too heavy, as I said. So CPU cache flash is enough to make persistency. So it needs new access interface to NVIDIA for next generation software. Because of the previous reasons, Linux provides some interfaces for application. The first is green line and storage access. 
application can access MD with traditional I.O. interface like SSD or HDD. So application can use this mode without any modification. Next is file system that's it's blue. Page cache is skipped when you use read or write on file system drugs. In addition, application can access NVDIM area directly if it calls Emma for a file. However, it needs file system support like XFS or ext 4 This mode is suitable for modifying your current application for NVDIM. The third is device DAX. It's red line. Application can access NVDIM area directly if it calls MMAP for slash dev slash DAX. This device file allows only open MMAP and close. In other words, you cannot use read, write, nor any other system call. It's for innovative new application with NVDIM. In addition, PMDK is provided. It's set of libraries and tools for file system DAX and device DAX. NVDM is shown as a device file like storage. For storage access, slash dev slash pmm and number s is created. And file system DAX slash dev slash pmm is created. And device DAX slash dev slash DAX is created. ND controller can create these devices when it creates namespace. Here is an example of file system DAX. You can make file system on slash dev slash pmm s or slash dev slash pmm. Please note slash dev slash dax is a device, character device. Since you cannot use read or write for device dax, you cannot use dd command for backup. As I said, uh, PMDK is a set of libraries and tools for file system DAX and device DAX. Uh, there are many components uh, like low level support, transaction support libraries, and tools, and, and so on. One of the interesting things is uh, it's not only Linux, but also you can use PMDK on Windows. I'd like to introduce some of the libraries and tools. The first is libpmm and libpmm2. It's the low layer library. It calls mapps to use NVDIM and calls suitable CPU cache flash instruction and etc. libpmm2 is a newer library than libpmm. Though it has some new feature, uh, but API is different from all the live PMM. Next is live PMM object. Uh, it's high layer library which supports transaction of the object on the DAX. For it's for general use case, but this is a highly recommended library in PMDK but user need to understand how to use each transaction. And next is DAX.io. As I said, slash dev slash DAX is a character device. Then you cannot use DD for backup. DAX.io command is provided instead of DD command. Unfortunately, file system DAX is still experimental status. It is a very explicit interface, I believe. The management way of NVDM is almost the same with the traditional file system. Operator can use traditional command, traditional command to manage NVDM area. And not only application can access NVDM area directly, but also it can use traditional system call. In contrast, device DAX requires pool management by tools of PMDK. Otherwise, a software needs to possess whole of the namespace. In addition, application cannot use many system calls in device DAX. 
but the experimental message is shown when the file system is mounted with DAX option. There are difficult issues in kernel layer for some years. So I'll talk what is the reason. So I'd like to talk about issues of file system DAX. What is solved and what is current issues? In summary, there are two big reasons. The first is file system DAX combines storage and memory characteristics. This causes corner case issues of file system DAX. They are often difficult to program. Second is more additional features were required, but they were difficult to make. Con the first is configure DAX on and off for each inode. The second is coexistence with copy on write file system. The first problem is updating metadata of the file. In file system DAX, we expected that application can make past tense of the data with only CPU cache flash, as I said. However, this also means there is no chance to update metadata by kernel or file system. Then, update time of the file may not be correct. If an application user writes some data to file on the file system DAX and a user removes some blocks of the file by truncate, kernel cannot negotiate it. So data of the file may be lost. If data transferred by DMA or RDMA to the page which is allocated as file system DAX, similar problem may occur. Here is the current status of update metadata problems. For general write access by application, it was solved by introducing a new map sync flag of MMAP. Page 4 to occurs every write access, then kernel can update metadata. PMDK specialized this flag already. For DMA or RDMA data access, if it occurs in kernel or drive layer, it was solved by waiting truncate until finishing RDMA. However, if it's occur in user process layer, like InfiBand or video card, it's not solved. Truncate cannot wait the completion of transfer because it made too long time. However, a workaround is found. It's on-demand paging. In ODP, usually driver or hardware does not map the pages of DMA RDMA area for applications. It maps the pages when application access them. Candidate or driver can coordinate metadata at the time. Meranox, an NVIDIA newer card, has the future. Next issue is unbind problem. Unbind is basically a CCFS interface to disconnect or hot remove a device. Each device driver provides its handler for it. Though NVDIM is not hot bug device physically, its interface can be used to disable and switch the mode of NVDIM namespace. For example, uh, it's to change namespace mode from file system DAX to device DAX and it's to allow that user can enable them like normal RAM. Here is an example of how to use device DAX namespace like a normal RAM. It's, uh, it's write unbind CCFS file. But unbind is likely surprising remove interface. There is no way to fail of unbind even if a user is using it. So it must be disabled uh, forcibly. So a race condition was reported between file system DAX and unbind in 2021st February. To solve this problem, file system DAX needs to disable a range of NVIDIA area immediately. Uh, currently, uh, this is not solved yet. It will be solved after the end of Ruan's work, which will be talked by him today.
His new code will help to solve it, I hope. Next problem is DAX on and off for each inode. Its expected use case is following. The first is need more fine grain settings. Users may want to change the DAX mode depending on each file. Next is change DAX mode attribute by application. Uh, configuration is always painful for administrator. If application can detect and change it, it will be helpful for them. The third is performance tuning. Since the right latency of an NVDM is a bit slower than RAM, user may want to use PageCast by DAS off settings. A final reason is workaround when file system DAX has a bug. So what was the problem? If file system changed DAX attribute, file system needed to change methods of file system between DAX and normal file, but they may be not executed yet. Data of the page cache must be moved silently when the DAX attribute becomes off. These problems were very difficult. Fortunately, this issue was solved. The DAX attribute is changed only when its inode cache is not loaded on memory. Uh, file system can load suitable vessels for each attribute when it reloads inode memory. Uh, page cache of the file are also dropped. User can use this feature with the new mount option, mount hyphen o DAX equal inode. The DAX attribute is changed by the command. Please note the following. All applications which use the target file must close it to change the DAX attribute. File system will postpone changing the DAX attribute until dropping inode cache and page cache of the file. The main issue is co existing with copy on write file system. Here is a copy on write feature of file system. If there is a same data block on different files, file system can merge it as a same block. So far, if only file system manages such block, it was enough. Since a page cache is allocated for each file of the block, memory management layer don't need to know it. In file system DAX, it becomes problems. Merged block equals merged memory itself. It affects the memory failure case. So what is necessary? The first is need actual copy on write implementation for file system DAX. Currently, there is no implementation of leaflink delib for file system DAX. IOMAP, which is a newer IO block layer instead of buffer head, has an interface for copy on write file system. XFS file system DAX also use IOMAP but there is no code to use copy on write and DAX at the same time. Next issue is need to chase plural files from a merged block. When a memory failure occurs, kernel need to kill processes when, which uses the memory. To achieve it, kernel need to find all processes from the merged page or block, but a merged page has only one struct page no space for plural files in it. Ransom will talk how to solve them. Hi everyone. I'm going to show you how we deep dive to solve the issues of file system DAX. I will do it in two parts. The first one is how to support reflink slash dupe for FS DAX. The second one is how to improve the NVDM based reverse mapping. My name is Ran Shiyang. I'm a software engineer of Fujitsu Nanda. I used to work in embedded development. 
Currently, I'm focusing on the Linux file system and persistent memory. Here is the background of the issues we need to solve out. FSDX is still in experimental statute on XFS file system. It is because that Reflink and FSDX cannot work together. We can try to use them together and see what will happen. Firstly, create a new XFS file system with Reflink feature enabled, and then try to mount it with DAX option. Then we will see the error message, and more detailed reason is shown in D message. DAX on XFS is experimental, they cannot be used together. So what are the FS DAX and Reflink, and why they cannot work together? I will explain them in the next pages. The first one, what is Reflink? It is a file system feature that files can share their extents for system data blocks. The figure in the right shows a comparison between normal copy and Reflink copy. The above part is normal copy. It costs time and storage space to duplicate data extent. The below part is Reflink copy. It won't actually duplicate any data extent. Instead, it just remaps the original data extent to new file. So, without data duplication, Reflink has these two advantages, fast copy and safe storage. Since these two files are showing data extents, to prevent both of them from being modified, we need a copy and write mechanism here. It copies the shared data extent to a new destination before user data is written. So, this is what Reflink means. Then, what is FSDAX? Also called file system DAX, it is a mode of a NVDIM namespace. In this mode, page cache will be removed from the IO path. It allows a map to establish direct mappings to persistent memory media. So, why on earth Reflink and FSDAX cannot work together? We have investigated this problem in deeps and found two main issues. The first one is, we need to support copy on write and dedupe mechanism in FSDAX. The IOMAP interface needs to be extended to support copy on write. The implementation of copy on write and dedupe should be added in FSDAX. Another one is, we need to improve the current NVIDIA based reverse mapping by supporting a 1 2 N reverse mapping for NVIDIA. I will explain how we solve these issues in the next few moments. Let's start with the first issue. Support Reflink slash dedupe for FSDAX. Firstly, I'd like to compare what's the difference between the normal buffer I.O. with FSDAX. Here is a simplified write process of buffer I.O. The main purpose is to describe what it does in IOMAP framework. Initiate a write from user space, then come to IOMAP framework. We will get the destination from IOMAP begin in XFS. In buffered IO case, it allocates delay extents. Then in actor, destination data is read from disk to page cache. User data is written from user space to page cache. Then mark the page cache dirty. In the last, there is some cleanup work to do in IOMAP end in case of error. The third page cache will be synced to disk later. The sync job contains remapping new allocated extents. As is shown in the figure, the pr process of using page cache indicates the copy on write mechanism. But this is quite different in FSDAX, even though it uses IOMAP framework as well. In FSDAX case, it allocates immediate extents in IOMAP begin. The act also do the quite different things. Get NVDIM address by calling direct access and write user data directly to NVDIM without any page cache involved. What's more, there is no extra work in IOMAP end. Since there is no longer need for sync, there is no opportunity to remap the new extents. By comparing with the previous buffered IO, we can see that copy on write mechanism is missing in FSDAX. So, to solve the issue, what must be implemented? 
Look into the IOMAP framework. We need to allocate new extent for copyright use and store source extent info somewhere. So we introduce a SRC map to store the source extent. Then we copy the source extent data to new extent and write user data into it. This is the copy on write operation, which is needed in write or a map path. Remap is also necessary after a copy on write. IOMAP N is a good place to do that. In the last, we still have to implement a DAX specific dedupe method. Let's start to implement them. The first necessary thing is source extent info. The IOMAP framework only uses a structure named the IOMAP to tell actor the destination where and how long the data to be written. But it is not enough for copyright mechanism. To implement it, the source extent info is also needed, including its start block number, which means where to copy from, the length, which means how long to be copied, and the flag if is needed. Now, kernel developer Goldwyn has introduced another structure named SRC map to remember and pass the source extent info. The next necessary thing is to fill the members of SRC map. XFS only fill IOMAP at the end of IOMAP begin. We need to let SRC map to be filled too. As is shown in the flowchart, when it starts to write, we find the destination extent firstly. If it is a shared extent, which means needs copy on right. We allocate new extent. Then the destination we found should be treated as source data extent because all change will be made in the new allocate extent. So the SRC map is filled by destination extent. The LMAP is filled by new allocated extent. And then sets the LMAP F shared flag for actor use. In the DAX actor, adding copy on write operation is necessary. The current actor only write user data to destination by a DAX specific interface called direct access. It is used to translate IOMAP to NVDM address. So before user data is written, we need a pre-copy. Uh, let's see the flowchart. We add a copy on write branch to get source address from SRC map and the copy source data to destination address we got in the beginning. After that, we write user data to destination address. In this way, copy on write is able to execute it in write path. In the MMAP path, adding copy on write is also necessary. Different from normal page fault, FSDAX has its own specific PT fault and PMD fault which is 4KB page and 2MB page. It uses IOMAP framework too, but for now, it only finds the destination page and associate it with VMA. To support copy on write, we need a, a pre-copy before associating. We use direct access to get destination address, and in addition, PFN, which is for associating use. Then, similar with the previous get source address from SRC map and copy source data to destination address. After that, associate VMA with PFN we got in the beginning. At this point, copy on write mechanism has been added in FSDAX. Since FSDAX is synchronization, we need to remap extents we changed before right now. Otherwise, because the new allocated extent is not mapped, the metadata hasn't been updated. As a result, the file will not contain the copy on write extent. IOMAP end is a perfect place to do this job. In addition, if something wrong happened in actor, it is also a perfect place to clean up those extents. Of course, if it is not a copy on write, there is nothing needs to be done here. 
Beside copyright mechanism, the duplication is also necessary to be adapted to FS DAX. It is used to reduce redundant data on storage costs. The call function is to compare a range of data from two files to check if they are same byte to byte. There is a generic function for uh, normal files by comparing data read in page cache. However, FSDAX has no page cache, so this general function is not suitable for it. Thus, we need a new DAX compare function to compare data by accessing them directly from NVIDIA. As is shown in flowchart, direct access to files to get their NVIDIA address, and then compare data on it by calling memory compare to get the result, same or not. If same, it means the range of two files can be deducted to share same extents. However, we should pay attention to check if the two files are both enable FS DAX or not. Files with different DAX flags cannot be supported. Till now, we are able to make RefLink and FS DAX work together in write and mmap paths. However, it just looks functionable on the surface. In DIPS, there is another issue that needs to be fixed. As a block device, NVDIM permits files on its share same data extent thanks to reflink. Since it is a NVDIM, we have to think it as a memory device. In another word, files are sharing the same memory pages. So, the memory management layer also needs to understand it. In the next page, I will show you how we solve it. As a memory device, memory pages may fail in hardware level. That means the page could not be accessed anymore. The kernel triggers memory failure to handle this failure. When memory failure occurs, the system will track all processes associating with the broken page and then send signal to kill those processes. The track from memory page to a file is usually called reverse mapping. In this case, it is called NVDIM based reverse mapping. The current NVDIM based reverse mapping can only support one page to one file mapping. However, for reflink, because files are sharing same page, we need to improve it to support one page to multiple files mapping. To achieve it, I have thought of many ways. The first idea is described in the right figure. Uh, it was simple to be implemented and worked, but it is not a good idea because of the huge overhead. Uh, after that, I have tried solving it in many ways, but any of them was not perfect. The current strategy is to trace file system internal to find the one-to-n relationship, but there are still some difficulties, such as memory failure information is basically page unit, but we need to find where it is in file system. And file system may be created on partition or LVM or others, it affects relative offset, offset in file system. In, that, in the next page, I will show you how memory failure signal works through the associated layers. As we can see in the middle of the figure, two processes are sharing one DAX file. Then MC triggered because of shared page inside the file was broken. Memory failure takes over this exception and initiates a reverse mapping from the bottom to the top. From MM layer, device driver, block device, file system, files, and finally to all processes using the broken page. After that, send signals to processes to kill them by signal bus. So, the enhanced reverse mapping is the key to solve the problem. Since it spans many layers, we need to implement the reversed mapping on each layer. The first one is from NVDIM driver to DAX device. The second one is from DAX device to file systems. 
this is the most complicated one. We need to introduce DAX holder registration mechanism to correspond to different ways of using a storage device. The third one is from file system to files, which requires RMAP B tree feature. The last but not least thing is the compatibility for no reflink or no RMAP B tree file systems. For example, the ext4 file system. Then we will start from the first one. The memory failure always accepts PFN as its argument. It is the page frame number of system memory, so we need to translate it into the offset in NVDIM firstly. And then, according to the mode in use, the offset needs a further translation by each driver. For FSDAX mode, PF PMAM driver translates the offset linearly. For device DAX mode, the DAX driver needs to calculate the offset according to the DAX range property inside. In this session, we only take FSDAX mode into consideration. So, for now, we have got the offset inside the PMAM. PMAM is also a block device, so it can be used in many ways as any other block devices, such as making file system directly, parting in many partitions, creating LVM to combine many PMAM devices, or even creating nested partitions and mapped devices. To make it suitable for each kind of usage, we introduce a DEX holder registration mechanism to abstract them into one behavior. So the holder represents the inner layer of a PMAM. It is registered when the holder is mounted or initialized. The one behavior for each kind of usage is notifying failure into inner layers. They need to implement a notify failure interface. Let's start from the easiest one. The inner layer is file system. This case is created by MakeFS directly on a PMAM. There is no partition inside the PMAM. The reverse mapping translation only needs to remove the fixed block device header length. Then the second case is that inner layer is partition. This is created by partition tools. It could be one or more partitions inside. We need to find which partition the broken page locates in so that we can get the offset in inner file system. The translation is that remove the start offset of the partition we have located. The mapped device case is a bit complex. It is created by LVM to set or other tools. It creates many DM targets. The DM targets can be used in many ways as well, such as linear target, read, crypt, and so on. So before introduce translation method, we need to introduce reverse mapping for each kind of DM target first. This reverse mapping is the reverse progress of the exist map interface of DM target. With its help, reverse mapping for mapped device is able to achieve. We iterate all DM targets in a mapped device to find out which target contains the broken page. Then remove its off start offset. After the translation, we need to handle layers inside the mapped device. Here is an interesting thing. The inner layer could also be file system or even partition. But thanks to the holder registration mechanism, inner layer also is a holder, so that the reversed mapping is able to go on. Finally, it comes to file system. Reversed mapping from file system to files requires a map between feature. By giving an offset and length, we are able to search for extents contains it. Fortunately, XFS provides this query API. The search result could be file content or file system metadata. For the former case, we need to send signal to care processes using this file and try to recover file data. For the later case, it is hard to recover file system online. 
just shut down file system and report the error. Now that it is possible to find all files by the one to n reversed mapping, the original page based process collection and the queuing function should be modified to file based. As we know before, the ext4 file system doesn't support either reflink or rmap tree, so we need to keep the compatibility for file systems like it. Firstly, keep the original one page to one file reversed mapping. The relationship is created by associating page mapping and offset to a file's mapping and offset. It should be only associated once. Error is reported if something wrong to associate it more than once. But to make it compatible with 1 to n reverse mapping, we make some restrictions to avoid the error. Just make it associate only once and only for the first time. Secondly, keep the original reverse mapping routine. With the support of the first compatibility, the original page-based reverse mapping still works. So keep it and fall back to it if the 1 to n reverse mapping routine gets the operation not support error. So the 1 to n reverse mapping has been implemented so far. It is compatible for all NVD modes, compatible for all usage of PMAP, compatible for all file systems. We have some future work to do, such as fixing the race condition against unbind. With the help of the 1 to n reversed mapping, this can be fixed. We hope my code can help such case. Thanks. Conclusion We talked about these topics. Community has made many enhancements for NVIDIA on Linux. We have worked for NVIDIA to remove experimental status of file system drugs. We hope it will be achieved as soon as possible. Thank you very much for listening.